Hi everyone, we're back again with another OVAS Spotlight series. And this time we have a, a project which needs no introduction that is top 10 project. Uh, we also have Andrew with us, who is one of the uh, leader for top 10. And not just that, he's also uh, executive director for OVAS. So let's welcome Andrew. Hi, Andrew. Good day, how are you? Thank you so much for joining me today. And I'm so glad that uh, you could spare some time uh, for uh, Spotlight series. And I know how busy you are with all the changes and bylaws and whatnot you've been doing this year. That's totally commendable. Mm -hmm. Thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah, so um, uh, this project, as I mentioned, needs no introduction, but we still want to know that how this project started, what all people uh, did to get it uh, where it is today. Okay, so back in the early days of OWAS, Dave Wickers and Jeff Williams uh, of Aspect Security, um, they decided to do an ed education piece. Um, they called it the, uh, I think it was the uh, OWAS Top Security Risk or something. The very first one is the 2003 edition, which most people don't even have a copy of. And I must admit, I don't think I've got a copy of it either. The one that really got traction was the 2004 version the next year. And um, it really did start with what did Aspect Security see from their work? Um, and, you know, the surprising thing in many ways is that it hasn't really truly changed overly much um in terms of content um, like for example injections have always been number one um interesting factoid in 2017 we had a four and a half hour meeting um discussing whether or not it should still be number one because the data is on the cusp now if it hadn't have actually been for the fact that we treated them as risks uh, it would have been number seven or so because of the work the reality is is that um you know the first couple uh, the 2003 and 2004 were Jeff and Dave's best judgment and it's proven over a long period of time to be that. Um, but in some ways, looking at the data now, because we've got some hard data, it looks like the top 10 is self-referential. People find the things in the OS top 10 because it's in the OS top 10. And therefore the things in the OS top 10 will always be the OS top 10. And that's a bit of a disappointment. So we need to now spread our wings and really start to collaborate stronger with the OWASP proactive controls, frameworks and developers, uh, languages to start eliminating bug classes uh, rather than just simply saying these are bad items. Um, we know they're bad and the only way for us to start fixing them is to work with the frameworks and developers to actually eliminate them. For example, React and Next.js don't have cross-site scripting. Um, we're seeing frameworks improve in that way. And so cross-site scripting used to be very high up and now it's actually very low. It's actually number seven. Um, and that's actually showing that we've actually done some good work. Um, so yeah, um, where does the data come from? Well, in 2007, um, for the 2007 edition, I got the data from CBE. So the NIST guys, were, or sorry, the MITRE guys were very, very generous in sharing data with us that wasn't public at the time. Um, it is now, you can actually get the XML dump from them. Um, and again, that showed that pretty much the industry is looking for the things that are in the OWASP top 10. Yeah, um, yeah, that's an interesting thing. So um, now when you mentioned that you gathered details from uh, uh, like CVE and uh, so many other forums. So um, that means it's not just OWASP, but we take data from so many people and then open it up for uh, uh, feedback and whatnot, correct? That's right, yep. So in 2017, we got a data um, from uh, about 43 firms, um, you know, from Vericode through small boutiques, through um, some of our traditional contributors, such as Aspect and others, um, including my own firm. We actually contributed about 5,000 of those results. And this is humans. We had different categories of human um, augmented by tools and tools augmented by humans because they find different things. Uh, static analysis tools are really good at finding things that you just don't find during penetration tests and they over represent those values. Um, and so we needed to do some data normalization. And so we ended up with 114,000 apps worth of data in the 2017 version. 
Um, we've already got over 200,000 apps worth of data now uh, for the 2021 version. Um, the analysis of that will kick off in the early new year. I really wish my co-leads, Neil um, Smithline, Brian Glass and Torsten Gickler were here. Um, it'd be worthwhile interviewing Brian as a data scientist actually, because the way that we have to manipulate that data to get to a analysis is very interesting and it's sometimes quite contentious. Um, but the data is going to be available to all. Um, you can make your own analysis. Um, so there is one more important, um, interesting fact that you talked about that uh, OWASP top 10 is not just OWASP top 10, but it's integrated with ASVS. It's also integrated with proactive controls and many other projects. And even uh, I remember PCI talking about OWASP top 10. A oh, funny story. Um, when I wrote the OWASP top 10 2007, I said, please don't use this in a standard. It's not a standard, it's an awareness piece. And then it got incorporated in PCI BSS 1.0. They didn't talk to us. Um, that was disappointing because quite frankly, we could have made a much better version of PCI DSS with them uh, based around what their developers should do, not what they should not do. Uh, and unfortunately, they also decided to include some of the old OS Top 10 2004, which included buffer overflows. And yes, as a systems language, um, it is important. But in financial terms, COBOL is still a very popular language and Java is a very popular language. Um, they generally don't have buffer overflows, so they wasted an opportunity to actually have something important in there instead of buffer overflows. Um, that has obviously been addressed in the, re in the meantime. Uh, but yeah, we actually do try to bring in, because it's an education piece, it's not a standard, um, we try to bring in as many other points of view. I like to bring in the proactive controls because telling a developer what to do is way more important than telling them what to not to do because there's a whole heap of things not to do. Uh, there are over 1200 CWE categories. I could not tell you how to tell a developer 1200 things not to do, but if I could tell them 10 things to do, I, I, we can. Um, we're also linking to the testing guide. We're also to, um, linking to um, the ASVS, the Application Security Verification Standard, which is a standard. It is written from the point of view of tests. The OS top 10 is not testable. It has actually got 43 CWEs in it. It's the OS top 43. It's just impossible to test. Whereas the ASVS, every single item is a separate um, weakness that can be tested and it's written in a way that is deliberately designed to be testable. Um, so if you're a developer watching this, please don't use the OS top 10, go to the ASVS and start with level one. Uh, that'll keep you busy for a while. Yeah, absolutely. That's totally interesting. I, I wanted to ask you any import, uh, any interesting fact that you can talk about uh, top 10, uh, apart from the uh, this being known to everyone, but I think this is the most important fact, which Every everyone should be aware of. Well, I don't know if they need to be aware of it, but every single document I've ever released has got Easter eggs in it. <laughs> and the OS Top 10 2017 has an Easter egg and no one's discovered it yet. <laughs> Very nice. I am going to mention it. <laughs> I think anybody who has any bone of cryptography in their body will actually understand where it'll be, but what it is. No one's discovered it yet, but I've made it as easy as possible for someone with the right tools to work out what it is. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> so uh, I have one last request. We're going to be writing the OS top 10 pretty much in public um, starting in January. Uh, if people want to come and help write the OS top 10 with us, um, pop by the OS top 10 project. We'll have a branch that we're going to be working in. Um, and we encourage reviews, we encourage writers, we encourage graphic artists. We need a new design because uh, we're trying to be marked down first. We're trying to be uh, web centric and mobile friendly. Um, and so the PowerPoint version of it uh, is not gonna be the way we present it this year. Um, but what we need is high quality content. So if people are interested in getting involved with the OS Top 10 project, please uh, come by us and uh, we have a Slack channel and we'd be more than happy to answer any questions. Great. Thank you so much, Andrew. This is really, really helpful. And uh, 
uh, there have been a lot of people who've been asking about all these facts of, uh, around OWASP top 10. Uh, we've been working around it for so long, but uh, when you want to get so close to the project, then you understand these things are very, very um, uh, nice and you should know about it. And anyone who is listening to this conversation, make sure you go back and uh, check out the project and do contribute. It's very, very important to contribute in any way possible. There are so many ways. So do go through it and uh, contribute or reach out to Andrew for anything. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Happy New Year as well. Thank you.